Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection delivered us from the power of our enemy, grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the, from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and the other Gentiles. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit with, and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in, and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us, who were chosen by God as witnesses, and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord.
A reading from Paul's letter to the church in Philippi. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. For since death came through a human being, the resurrection of the dead has also come through a human being. For as all die in Adam, so all will be made alive in Christ, but each in his own order, Christ the first fruits. Then at his coming, those who belong to God, then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father, after he has destroyed every ruler and every authority and every power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. On the first day of the week, at early dawn, the women came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified and on the third day rise again? Then they remembered his words. And returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the other women with, whom, with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb. Stooping and looking in, he saw the linen cloths by themselves. Then he went home amazed at what had happened. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. 
in the name of the one who lived for us, who died for us, and rose again. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen Alleluia. Alleluia. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen Happy Easter. Easter. How good it is to be together in this glorious celebration of the resurrection of our, our Savior, Jesus Christ. We have walked this past week with Jesus on the road to the cross. And today, we go to the tomb, and it is empty. As we've celebrated this last week of Holy Week, two things have occurred to me. The first is this, that the pattern of living and dying and rising again has been in God from the very beginning. As one 19th century theologian said, there is a cross in God even before the wood is seen on the hill at Calvary. From all eternity, the cross has been in God. And today we celebrate that it is also true that from the very beginning, the empty tomb has been in God. And because of this eternity that we are invited into, we are invited to align our lives with the living and the dying and the rising of Christ. To find this pattern even in our lives. So let's hear the story again. The story of the empty tomb. And let's hear that call to us to bring our lives in alignment with the living and dying and rising of Christ. On the first day of the week, at early, early dawn, the women who had come with Jesus from Galilee came to the tomb, taking with them the spices that they had prepared, that pure nard. And among the women were Mary Magdalene, Joanna and Mary, Jesus' mother. The women had waited until Sunday to anoint Jesus because Saturday was the Sabbath day and they were to stay home. It was also dangerous for them to come to Jesus' tomb because those who had put Jesus to death were still out looking for his disciples. So the women came quietly, they brought their spices. And they came early, 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 when no one would be looking for them. But the women weren't the first ones to visit the tomb. Before they arrived, God had been there. God had visited that tomb. The authorities had tried to stop Jesus, to put an end to his way of love and mercy. They crucified Jesus on the cross, and they killed him. But God had another plan. God was with Jesus in the tomb, and God was not going to let anyone put an end to the saving work of Christ. God was in Jesus' way of living and dying. God loved Jesus' life of mercy and healing. And so God called, Arise, come forth, Jesus, be unbound. Just like Miriam and Moses crossing through the Red Sea, Jesus rose out of the depths of death. He broke the bonds of death, and Jesus rose to new life. And God said, it is very good. This new creation in Jesus is an echo of that creation of Genesis that opens for us the way of goodness and mercy it opens for us a life in right relationship with God, a new Eden. And all of creation rejoiced. The flowers bloomed, the trees burst into fruit, the mountains shook, the seas roared and foamed, and I think here in Transylvania County, the waterfalls swashed. 
The morning star sang together and all the heavenly beings shouted for joy. I think even that sea monster Leviathan and that land beast Behemoth could not contain their joy. They danced and God joined in the dance with all the angels all over the cosmos. The reign of God's love had triumphed through all creation. Life had conquered death. Jesus, who had been crucified, was alive. But at first the women couldn't see it. They arrived at the tomb and they found that stone rolled away and they didn't find a body in the tomb. They stood there perplexed, wondering what this could be about. And suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and they bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. And the women thought, we didn't look for the living in the flood. We looked in the ark. We didn't look for them among the pharaohs and the slave masters. We looked for the living in the Hebrew people as they went through that Red Sea into freedom. The women said to each other, isn't this what Jesus told us all along? Don't look for the living among the dead. People bound by greed or selfishness, don't look for life there. Powers of this world that can't see God's presence is here and now calling us to love and peace. Don't look for the living among the dead. Go look for Jesus where people find true joy. Look for Jesus where people wash each other's feet. Look for Jesus where love is stronger than hate. Look for Jesus where communities are built on the common good and that pe where people thrive like trees by flowing streams. Look for Jesus where pain is transformed into hope. That's where you look for the living. When the women heard this news, it was like God's breath was blowing on their dry bones. It was like their hearts of stone had turned into hearts of flesh. Empowered by joy and belief, the women became the first apostles and they shared this good news with the disciples. And today, these women share this news with us. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed, alleluia. Our God this day has made this holy day to shine with the glory of the empty tomb. We pray that God helps us to embrace Jesus' life of mercy and healing Jesus rose from the dead to show us that God's loving kindness will never die. Jesus rose from the dead to show us who God is and who we are. On this day, all creation rejoices, the angels sing, and the flowers of promise bloom. And today, you are invited to live the resurrection too. You are invited to pass through the watery depths of all the red seas of your life. You're invited to feel that breath of God blowing on your dry bones. You're invited to align your life with the pattern of Jesus' living and his dying and his rising to new life. You are invited to be a part of the rejoicing of all creation, that God has overcome death and raised us to new life. Thanks be to God. Please join with me in reciting the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. 
We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he arose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We acknowledge baptism for the church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. On this Easter morning, help us to feel again the joy of the first disciples, for we are Easter people. Cleanse our hearts of prejudice and selfishness and inspire us to hunger and thirst for righteousness, for we are Easter people. Teach us to use your creation for your purposes, that all may share the good things you provide, for we are Easter people. Bless our search for justice and peace and give our leaders wisdom to carry out your will in the world, for we are Easter people. Inspire us to generosity of spirit toward our neighbors, for we are Easter people. Set free all who are bound by fear and despair and help us to be ready to minister to all in need, prisoners, victims of abuse, the homeless, the poor, for we are Easter people. Keep us conscious of all who are sick in mind or body, especially those on our parish prayer list, and strengthen all who give their energy to healing. For we are Easter people. Give a peaceful end to the dying and eternal rest to departed. Comfort all with the promise of the resurrection, especially Patricia Brown and Murray Comer. For we are Easter people. And I invite you now to a time of quiet reflection. Your intentions are invited silently or aloud. We remember the people of Ukraine and all those around the world who are displaced from their homes because of war or oppression. Almighty God, your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, has defeated death and opened the gate of everlasting life. We humbly ask you to lead us always to desire what is good and with your continual help to make our lives worthy in your service. We make these prayers through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us share Christ's peace with one another.
Happy Easter. Happy Easter. It's so wonderful to see you with all these faces here. Uh, what a glorious morning to be celebrating the resurrection of our Lord. Thank you for being here. I'm Elizabeth Rolls. I'm rector at St. Philip's. I welcome you, especially if you are new among us, if you're visiting today. We're so glad that you joined us. We're glad if you joined us on Facebook Live. Thank you for joining us. Happy, happy Easter. Well, I forgot to do this at the early service, and I can't believe it because my birthday is this week. So are there any birthdays or anniversaries or other occasions that we want to mark with prayer? And is there any clergy in the house who wants to come and say the prayer so I get my prayer too? Looking at you, Judith. Looking at you, Judith. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Happy birthday, everyone. Thank you, Well, this is that, uh, that time of year where I get to say thank you because so many people from our parish helped to make this week and this day possible. So I want to take some time and say thank you to, to all of these folks. First, I'm going to start with music and with our organist and choir master, Dr. Timothy Sloan. <laughs> And we say thank you to our choir who have put in so many hours of preparation. And to our guest musicians, we're glad you're here. You make this day so special. Thank you. Um, we also want to say thanks to our AV team back there, Bonnie Jensen, the queen of the Facebook. And, and Holly Votal, who helps us so much with our communications. We want to say thanks to all of our worship ministers, to our altar guild, to our readers, to our lems, our lay Eucharistic ministers, to our vergers, to our acolytes, to our ushers, all making this day possible, this week possible. And uh, a big thanks to our flower guild. Look at this. I mean, it's really spectacular. <laughs> Does everybody have a bulletin today? Well, we have some people to thank for that. The office volunteers who do all the proofreading and the photocopying and the who knows what else. It's, it's a huge production to make, make it possible for us all to have our bulletins. And of course, we thank Jill Stewart, our office administrator, for all the ways that she holds us together. We have, I have a new person to thank this year, Abby Glass, our children and youth minister, our family minister. Abby has become a, a specialist this season in uh, adjusting the lights during all of our season, all of our services when the lights had to be dimmed and then come back up. Abby was back there controlling, and you should see the light panel. It's really quite complicated. And of course, we thank Angela and Edna who keep our buildings and our grounds so beautiful and clean and, and fixed up. We're grateful to them. I want to thank our Parish Life Committee. We had a wonderful celebration, and I hear there are some leftover cookies and cake for our coffee hour after the service. 
Um, we had a wonderful celebration last night. And then, you know, we had members of our parish life committee that helped the Easter Bunny to stuff all those eggs that we had at the uh, Easter egg hunt and to help the Easter Bunny hide them. So that was a wonderful um, celebration. Thank you to our parish life committee. And then this, um, this season, I could not have done it without the help of our adjunct clergy, Diane and Bill Livingston, Rich Kuntz and Judith Davis, who helped me uh, by preaching and helping to celebrate and helping to preside um, and just sort of holding me up throughout all of this week. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Finally, I wanna let you know that uh, we will be receiving uh, from the common cup this communion. Um, we will be receiving wine together today. Um, our bishop has allowed us to return to the common cup. Now, we're not gonna receive in quite the same way that we have received in the past. So get ready, I'm about to give you a bunch of instructions. And, um, but I want you to know, even if you get up here and you forget the instructions, don't worry. We will make sure you get what you need when you come forward for communion. Um, so, uh, first I want to say that it is absolutely okay to receive the bread only. That is full communion. So if you're not ready for the common cup, uh, please know that if you receive the bread, you have received full communion. Now, if you would like to receive the bread only, what I want you to do is when you come and come up to the rail is to put your hand over your heart. That will let us know that you would like the bread only. Then you can make your hands like a plate. So put your hand over your heart if you want the bread only. If you would like the bread intincted in the wine, and what's going to happen is either um, the, the Eucharistic minister or myself, we will dip the, the bread in the wine for you and then place it in your hand. So if you would like to receive the wafer having been dipped into the wine, um, just put your hands out and that will let us know that you want the bread and the wine. And then as always, if you would like to come forward and not receive the elements, but to receive a blessing, simply put your arms over your chest and that will let us know that you would like a prayer. You got it? You got all the signs? All right, but don't worry, no anxiety. Just come forward and receive this love that is pouring out for you today. And now, yes. Oh yes, and there are gluten-free wafers. You will just need to let us know. There is no sign for a gluten-free wafer. You just have to say, gluten-free, please. And we'll put them. We'll put them out here for you. So they will be, and they're consecrated. Um, if you are receiving gluten-free, we've done a little test trial with this. The gluten-free does not absorb the wine. So it's probably best if you're receiving gluten-free to receive in one kind only. It's very complicated, but maybe one day we'll be back to the way it once was. But. And now, my friends, Hear these words of scripture. Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Amen.
All things come of thee, O Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with Philip and all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, 
now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. It is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Let us pray with those who are watching from home. Gracious God, since I cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me in this life and in the life to come. Amen. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. And serve the Lord.
stay upright. Good to see you. 